All right, so I've been so focused lately on trying to build my own roaster that I haven't even thought about showing you guys the way that I've been roasting, which is the dog uh, dog bowl heat gun method. It's a pretty nice method if I do say so myself. I've gotten some very successful roast out of it. So today I think we're gonna roast up some Burundi dry processed beans and we're gonna try to take these beans to a very lighter styled roast and see what we can get out of it. Whenever I roast, with my uh, dog bowl. It's not a dog bowl, but I use a stainless steel bowl, but it's technically called the dog bowl heat gun method. I usually do about 200 grams at a time of my green beans. Get myself 200 grams of them. It looks like I'm running low. Mm, we're gonna throw those in there for safe measures. Perfect. We're gonna 240. 240 grams of beans, which are gonna be beautiful and lightly roasted here in 20 minutes. I will actually keep some of them right here and we'll do a comparison of before and after whenever I get done with the roast. All right, for this, like I said earlier, I use myself a stainless steel bowl. This is where my beans will be. The aforementioned heat gun. This bowl is gonna get really hot, so I put a little hot holder below it and then one of the most important parts in roasting is being able to cool the beans down quickly when you reach the temperature you want so I got this ready to grab the bowl I dump them in here I lid them off and I take this hair dryer which I'm gonna have plugged in already and ready to go and I'm gonna cool them off by blowing cool air onto the beans and letting them bounce around a little bit oh and we forgot the whisk BRB and our whisk Get them beans really nice and agitated while we're doing this. All right, whenever I start roasting, it's gonna get real loud like what you just heard. Need to have a timer ready to go. And go. So I went ahead and did a voiceover for this part of the video. In the first minute, I'm trying to get these beans going quickly, reaching temps of 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Roasting coffee. Come on, you know I had to leave my beautiful singing in this video. Not sorry for you that you had to hear that. On a more serious note, you can start to see the chaff flying around at this point in the roast. We are looking for the beans to reach around the 300 degree mark, which is usually the end of the drying phase and where our beans will make a noticeable color change. At this point, I like pushing the beans temp to around 385 in increments of 30 seconds, raising the temp just a little at a time. A quick tip if you decide to do this yourself is in this dog bowl heat gun method, the way I increase the temp is by lowering the gun closer to the beans and then raising the gun to decrease or back off on the temperature. Now that we are this far into the roast, my forearm is getting very tired. You will see me giving my stirring hand a break every so often. We are also at the point that some would say is the most important time in the roast, first crack. During this part, the moisture content in the bean is turning itself into steam and cracking the bean in the process of escaping it. Normally, it's very typical if someone pulls their roast after first crack for a light roast. And now I'll try to let you listen to these first few cracks, hopefully that you can hear through the noise of the heat gun and the bean stirring. Oh, there it was, first crack was at seven minutes, so we're gonna push to 25% at seven minutes. We gotta keep them going so that they don't get overcooked in one spot. Gonna pop this sucker on there. Gonna grab our handy dandy blow dryer. We're gonna get these beans nice and cooled down. are nice and cool and man just look at that that is one good looking roast that's better than the one that I made with my electronic stirring thing 
this sucker came out great. I mean, just look at the aftermath. Covered in chaff from head to toe, even all right here. Chaff is just everywhere. If you do this, definitely do it outside because it creates a lot of smoke in the area and a lot of chaff or silver skin, whatever you want to call it. This fluffy stuff breaks off of the green beans as they heat up. And now do y'all want to see my favorite part about this process? Voila. So now we can take some of our beans that we just finished, do a little side-by-side -side comparison. You'll see that the beans actually swell up as they're roasted. Like if you compare one of these beans to one of these beans, you can see that it's even bigger now. They just swell up as the moisture escapes these beans. For my own home roast, I like to take an Expo marker and I write down on my jar the name of the beans that I just roasted. And then I write down the date and then the time that I roasted them. I'm definitely no expert in the way that I store my beans. I just throw them in a mason jar. And to degas these freshly roasted beans, I typically will leave the lid, the lid very loose for the first 24 hours. And then once I hit the 24 hour period, I'll come back and I'll tighten the lid and I will rest these beans for a week until I start using them. I know in my last video that I went ahead and brewed them right away and I didn't get great results because they weren't properly degassed. So definitely need to be degassing your beans for at least a week once they're freshly roasted. Brings out the great flavors that the coffee has to offer and allows for the CO2, like the gassy flavors to kind of leave the beans. In my opinion, the best time to consume your beans is whenever they're between the one to five week range. Although that's what, that's not my opinion. That's just kind of like more of a professional's opinion to consume between the one to five week range. But I've had good experience between the one to like eight week range. Trying to leave as much chaff out of here as possible. Go ahead and put that lid on. And we're gonna tighten it, but not all the way. We're gonna leave a little bit of play right there so that the gases can escape. And there's those Burundi beans. All right, so I hope everyone enjoyed getting to watch me make these wonderful Burundi beans into a light medium roast, kind of in between. Let me give you another comparison real quick from that to that. And if you want to see any more coffee nonsense or watch me actually brew these beans, I will be doing that probably within a week because I'm really impatient. And even though I said to wait a week, probably won't be doing that, but like and follow and you'll see me use them in a coffee short. Hope you all have a great day and stay caffeinated.